you guys. Thanks for the wait. And I think we are still ahead of time, so that's fine. Madhu, which is our panelist, uh, head of marketing for Raymond, is on her way. So give her another five minutes. She'll join. But we'll get started straight up. Uh, again, today what we are going to kind of really explore is the whole connected TV space with an overlay of sports marketing and with the context of the upcoming Cricket World Cup. Before we get into it, a quick round of introductions would be good. So starting from Orko, uh, if you can just quickly introduce yourself and also probably give one interesting fact about yourself so this audience kind of knows you a little more beyond your LinkedIn profile. Okay, so I lead the marketing strategy for HSBC in India. And uh, one key fact is, uh, yeah, I love sports and I play football. Hi, I'm Anjali Krishnan. I lead consumer experience for Mondelez. Uh, I think one of the most interesting facts about myself is that I can go to sleep anywhere, anytime. <laughs> no, she was not sleeping outside. No? So, you know, hi, I'm Abhijit, Abhijit Shah. I, I, I work with ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund and I, I lead the digital marketing technology and direct business for ICICI Mutual Fund in India mm -hmm. and also a part of the AMFI Financial Literacy Committee uh, which, uh, which, is, which is accountable and responsible for mutual funds, IEA, the ad campaigns that you see across TV. Interesting fan, I'm a huge, uh, interesting fact rather, not fan, interesting f uh, fact is that I'm a huge cricket fan and a sports fan. Uh, all the stories Drew can tell you about the fan, fan worship. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, good morning everyone. My name is Dhruv Dhawan. I had ads for Disney Hotstar prior to which uh, yeah, worked with Ishan back at Google and, and again uh, Airtel. Those are the two large companies, uh, two stints that I've had over the last 20 years. Um, fun fact is, uh, yeah, I do have a YouTube channel with my son and we jam occasionally. Uh, <clears throat> and I can vouch for his passion for cricket. Uh, both of us saw the India-New Zealand together. So yes, uh, really stoked about uh, the upcoming World Cup and we'll talk more about that. Thanks, thanks guys. Um, I think now it's time for you guys to know our audiences a bit more, okay? And I'm not sure how we'll do this, but uh, since going back to the topic, maybe with a raise of hands, can people tell us who have watched live sports on a mobile device? Two hands. Wow, that's, that's, that's probably good. He had two phones. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, exactly, two and, devices. And, and people who watch live sports uh, on a connected television. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's probably an equivalent number of the mobile devices and CTV. Anjali, so please definitely take note. some cues for our marketeers <laughs> out here. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Uh, okay. Cast, yeah. Correct. So even though my connected TV doesn't get connected, but through my mobile, I can talk. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, we see a lot of users doing that. He presented YouTube. I think that YouTube connected TV will be traditional TV in the next three years or even less. Interesting. I think Madhu is running late, so probably we can have you here as well. <laughs> Interesting, right, interesting. India will be number one economy in 2030. Modi ji always be number three. But with all the figures which are coming in, and it is predicted by in 16 months, US economy is going through the roof, and China and US will... Is bar CTV par, don't worry, okay? <laughs> cool, so uh, thanks, thanks guys, and thanks for that plug. I really appreciate that. Uh, Dhruv, I think... Uh, Cricket World Cup is around the corner, okay. I'm personally excited because I play cricket. Um, and uh, obviously the World Cup is miles apart. Uh, but then what's the good thing is that we have approximately 28 games which are in prime time and 27 games which are off prime time, okay. Uh, again, we are seeing a lot of excitement from the fans. We are seeing excitement and inquiries from the uh, advertisers. Tell me a bit more about excitement at Disney Hotstar. 
No, we are, uh, our excitement is palpable. As of uh, yesterday, we now have a daily stand-up revenue call <laughs> that's come up on my calendar, which means that we are gunning very fast towards all the partnerships and raking in uh, ad dollars, right? Um, I, I think a couple of things. One, we've seen some amazing traction on the platform in October and November when we had World Cup 23, uh, both in terms of concurrency and as well as in terms of overall viewership. And we see that, of course, those are 50 over matches played in India. Uh, this is going to be in the US and Caribbean at time zones, which are India suited. So a lot of the India matches continue to your point will be at, at 8 p.m. And then the rest of the matches will be early morning and they're of course spread. But, uh, and shorter duration, right? So that's, that's one part which is slightly different and it is coming at the back of a heavy cricket season that we are in right now. But again, India is playing, Virat and Rohit are back. So we do see that being a big traction for uh, the platform and, and just the user uh, engagement. A couple of other things uh, in terms of what we are really excited about. We're bringing out a new feature on premium uh, audiences, which allow actually a mix of you reaching out to the connected TV audience, as well as the high-end mobile phone audience, which pretty much covers if brands and, and agencies want to partner with us on uh, premium partnerships or reaching out to this premium cohort. Uh, we're building in this new feature versus last time around. Uh, but yeah, I can talk more about what we are more excited about right, right now. We're full speed ahead as an organization, both in terms of making sure we are potentially beating the concurrency record from last time around, and our, do our tech platforms continue to support that? And of course, from just making sure advertisers get the most value, uh, we're, we're really focused deeply on that. Perfect, thanks, 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 Ru, for that plug. Uh, Anjali, let me come to you and uh, just a bit of context, right? We have seen over the years that a lot of brands have been actually built on back of cricket, okay? And as we have moved in the last six, seven years, okay, now advertisers have uh, a choice of which screen to pick when it comes to uh, advertising on cricket, especially on big events like ICC, et cetera, right? So now you have a choice to advertise on linear television or the SDHD feeds. You have the choice to do mobile. Uh, you have a choice to do CTV. So what are the key considerations and the thought process of selecting which specific medium and which specific screen? Can you give us a bit of insights on this? Shatik, I will speak for myself as Mondelez and not for other advertisers, and I just want to give a little context to my category before I go into how we look at our channel planning. My brands operate in mid to mass segment. And uh, I have a very few brands in my portfolio that cater to a premium segment. We're, of course, growing that segment of audience. But that's where largely, you know, my audience comes from. And uh, most often than not, whenever we've advertised on cricket, we've seen the greatest effectiveness come driven to us by brands that are large on scale. So high penetration brands, you know, brands that have great volume uh, targets are the ones that deliver very well on cricket because cricket helps you get, you know, quick and easy impact as well as reach. So for us, uh, Cadbury Dairy Milk, which is our mass market premium, rec I mean mass market recruiter brand to the yeah. category, is what goes on cricket most often every year. In fact, we have a dedicated campaign that we do around cricket. And because of the nature of the audience, we typically end up taking a mix of linear TV and digital. And when I'm saying digital, I'm talking about reach digital, I'm not talking about connected TV right. and OTT. So that's where it ends up. But I also do have an audience which I know has slightly deeper pockets mm -hmm. and um, has, in that sense, a little more propensity to purchase brands which are premium in my category. Obviously, because connected TV means you need to have a subscription, you need to have a cable connection, you need to have a smart TV, all of that. So there is a slightly more premium audience compared to the mass market brands that I advertise to. And we also know that these are, you know, audiences I would not reach through linear TV because they're cord cutters. So where I have a more premium brand that wants to advertise to that audience, that's where CTV comes into play, and that's really the strategy that we apply. So mass reach goes on to TV and digital, mm -hmm. and, you know, more slightly premium products in our category end up being on CTV. 
Right. So, so every brand SKU has a different set of audience and yes. basis that your strategy comes in play. Correct. Interesting. I mean, that's, that's a logical thing to kind of uh, look at. But again, there is a lot of debate around is a uh, CTV audience only premium or is it Masi as well? I and mean, that's there. I think the industry is moving through. So we'll delve into that. Yeah, I think we haven't reached a critical mass yet on CTV for us to be able to say that, you know, mm -hmm. yes, it is Masi. But it's not that it's not going to be the future of... Right. It, we're just not at that number yet today if you have to look at it. Sure, sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, Arko, uh, over to you. Okay. Uh, what, what, what when it comes to kind of really uh, figuring about the strategy on sports, like, you know, the investment strategy on sports, or for you to consider sports, okay, what are the, what we have also seen is that with, with the investments that happening at Group M and all that, a lot of advertisers have actually skipped from HD and parked that investments into a CTV, okay? So that skip that has happened. Uh, that, that's for real, right? I mean, we are seeing that. Do you also see that advertisers will eventually move from SD, okay, SD budgets to CTV as well? I think the movement, just let's get into a little bit of data to start with, right? Uh, and it's Group M data, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 2020, uh, internet inside households in India was around 36% of households, right? And now we are at 52%. So, that's something which is a considerable jump. Now, if you look at that, obviously, now you know, once you have internet, you know, you can obviously, you know, get into a connected TV environment, right? Um, so, what I would suggest is, at this point of time, moving from HD to connected TV has happened, which you mentioned, because there is an overlap, there's an obvious overlap, right? Uh, in terms of somebody who's watching HD, and then obviously the, the, the uh, shift is quite easy from, for a person to shift from HD to a connected TV. SD on the other side is somebody who is mainly in the rural areas, right? Now there are two ways to look at it, right? There are products and services like what I sell or my brand is specifically on connected TV for a reason, right? Because we are targeting a segment which is mainly I'll cover most of it on a connected TV. But there are SKUs or like you mentioned, right? Uh, for example, let's, let me put this example across, right? Now HD TV, there are these soaps that run on television. And there is a generation that actually watches that on that uh, on, on a linear TV, right? So that will still remain, and products that target to that specific segment will be on TV, right? And there are, uh, you know, the decision maker, in some cases, the de decision maker has shifted to connected TV, and they will shift. So that's how it is. It's, it's basically who you're targeting and where you get them. So for a brand like HSBC, we are great to be on connected TV and we'll cover most of it on connected TV, right? But there are SKUs, like she also mentioned. So there are specific SKUs, you have to be on linear TV as well. Right. Abhijit, any complimenting on contrasting views on the responses that you have from your fellow panelists? No, I think, you know, it, it depends on what is the campaign objective, right? And very clearly, uh, and I, I, I talk for financial products, right? Uh, most of, and people in the room would agree, whenever people talk about any financial services uh, advertising, it is, uh, it is not about advertising, it is about performance marketing largely, saying that boss kitna lead milega. Kitna Everything is performance milega. marketing. Yeah. And, and Atik, <laughs> you know, you are unfortunately at the receiving end of it, saying, yeah. you know, when, whenever marketers on our side of the table talk about advertising, they don't actually talk about advertising, they're only talking about sales, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, to that, to that uh, effect, one should look at how much of the performance marketing budget can actually go towards CTV or you know, you know mobile advertising, etc. Because kind of targeting that uh, 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 that you can do today, uh, unlike uh, yesteryears, is is magnificent. And in fact, you know you can target whatever cohort you want, whatever audience you want, what time you want, and then you can design a campaign, you know, and integrate it reversely from the whole communication thought, plus the kind of uh, value adds or so to say segments or, or, or innovations that one can have on connected TV is, uh, is way ahead of what one can do on linear TV. So, if the objective is to drive sales or to drive that month's numbers and all, we believe you know, 
connected TV, there's no choice but to kind of over uh, uh, over index on on that. At the same time, of course, uh, linear TV uh, still has its own uh, segment, uh, you know. And uh, Anjali mentioned in terms of far and beyond uh, to mass outreach campaigns, or you know, where where connected TV is not reached, linear TV definitely is there. And and one has to look at in conjunction. We are talking about cricket as well as linear TV. So there is huge uh, segment that linear TV also uh, offers and, and the kind of uh, objective that you can drive there. Uh, in some total, one has to really look at, and sorry, I, I represent the mutual fund industry and yeah. we only talk about asset allocation thing in terms of... Maybe, maybe you can give an example of uh, yeah, CTV I, I, use case in targeting, uh, like, you know... Yeah, so we wanted to drive, for, at ICICI, mutual fund, we wanted to drive um, SIPs for a particular segment and uh, in a particular cohort and with the kind of mes messaging that we came out with. I think uh, the campaigns that we ran on Hotstar uh, really worked well for us. But then what we learned from them is that you can't again just do one campaign spurt and go away. You have to then build the momentum in a way that there is a product continuum because you can't say that, you know, Aji SIP is right? You know, SIP is something that you have to keep on do, doing at various market intervals. SIP <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and, and then we have, we, have, uh, we have been consistent in, in our approach in that. From a, from a ch choice of media, I think one more thing that we should look at is not about connected TV versus linear TV. Uh, one question that keeps on coming to us, and sorry, I am I'm, I'm trying to address the elephant in the room, saying, uh, are the print budgets or are the other mediums, other advertising budgets going towards connected TV? And that's that's one thing that, you know, as a panel, we should look at. No, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, thanks for those insights. Hi, Madhu. We are glad that you made it through I'm the so traffic sorry, of I'm Mumbai. Here times traffic is so unpredictable. Absolutely. So. I'm going to glad to have you here. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Very unprecedented. Yes. Yeah. No, so what we spoke about, just to kind of recap, like, yeah. you know, we spoke about the whole excitement around uh, Hotstar and the Cricket World Cup that's happening. We spoke about the strategies and the considerations that large advertisers kind of keep in play when they consider which screen to select. We talked about audiences first approach. And, and we touched upon a bit of premiumization, okay, that why people are selecting CTV is premiumization is an important. Now, obviously, the products and uh, the category that you operate in, there's a lot of premium stuff in there, right? So, so there is a, there's a mass belief, okay, that CTV audiences are considered premium. Is that your supposition as well, or you think differently? No, considering the, the category and the brand that uh, I handle, I mean, Yes, CTV, obviously, it has an affluence uh, audience, and that's what it, you know, it also helps us to target that set of an audience through a CTV uh, platform. And we have also seen in the past that, you know, some of our campaigns, we have uh, experimented initially in terms of how it works, and it really did work very well. And it also, uh, the fact is, you know, when we are talking about a suit, it is a premium product. So therefore, uh, using a connected TV platform where I'm getting an audience which is already, you know, uh, in that mind frame of buying a premium product, I think uh, it really works and it immediately segregates uh, not the uh, the set of TG that we would like to not address because it's a it's a high end product. So therefore, it has worked for us and going forward also we are. Uh, we are convinced that it's going to uh, grow further for us as well. And uh, we are in the process of, because we are a brand, almost 100-year-old brand, so we have seen various decades with different kinds of media, what works, what didn't work, and therefore the evolving the way we are in terms of the entire media landscape. So this is a new thing for us as well. And therefore, uh, like last year, we have done a campaign which is in the wedding segment, and therefore, uh, and CTV was one of the, the key routes uh, that we had uh, adopted for it. 
And it worked pretty well because A, it very uh, systematically and in a focused way targeted the TG that we wanted to uh, address. And from a messaging point of view, it, it, it also gave us the right kind of, uh, and from a performance point of view, it was very fabulous. So therefore, yeah, we are very hopeful and we see that uh, earlier it used to be from our media point of view, it is extensively on uh, television. So we are also, you know, trying to work the budgets around to see that how we work around television versus, and it's always for us, it's a very ATL led. So the surrounds are very important because it's just, just reaching the audience through a digital platform, but also how the experiential thing happens at a store or how the entire OH takes over. So for us, it's a basket of uh, the entire media landscape that we have to. But having said that, we also need to be now as we, some, you know, as we were discussing that performance metrics are the key for every marketer. So yes, we are looking for where we see the ROI and it's obviously everything is connected with the data being the key in today's Absolutely. context. Yep. And you can yep. address the cohorts as well, you know, so I think that works pretty well. Okay, cohorts is a nice segue for my question to you, Dhruv. Okay, now you heard about so much audience targeting requirements as such and that's the premise of selecting any medium is you as a broadcaster, as a platform owner, okay, how are you ensuring that the media spends that are happening on the platform are reaching the right audience cohorts? Um, so especially when it comes to live to, to, Yeah, so, so I think uh, if we go, now I'll just move to the overall tournament and, and just the environment of live, right? Uh, of course, we stream on mobile and we stream on connected TV and in the middle, like Abhijit was saying, even iPads and, mm -hmm. you know, desktops, etc. Today, if you look at audiences on mobile, we do have up to about 10,000 potential cohorts mm -hmm. that advertisers can mix and match. And these are through our partnerships. These are through our own data. This is also through the work that we do on uh, in-app understanding, right? So there are multiple ways in which you can do demo geo as simple as that and go up to even uh, some deeper audiences, like if you want well, finance, financial services right. buyers, right? Now that is a part where it'll cover mobile. But as you go into connected TV, it's a slightly different mm -hmm. view. Uh, we also know because somewhere it mirrors TV like buying, uh, we do have an option of going spot. So if you want to pick up certain moments of matches where you believe the intensity is gonna be higher, uh, of course you can't predict when Kohli's gonna hit 100, but uh, we do believe that that aspect of finding your sweet spot, so to speak, uh, we offer that as a solution. Right. Um, the other piece of audiences, and we've, uh, we partnered with Coke actually last year, was on click to WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And today, while mobile it's easier, of course you can just click and it invokes a WhatsApp uh, on your phone. Even on connected TV, there is a link. If you click on that, it does invoke because we all have signed in. Our, our users are all signed in when they're watching on connected TV. It'll actually invoke your WhatsApp bot. So to the point of collecting audiences or driving sales or lead gen, uh, connected TV to WhatsApp is a solution that we've piloted right. last year and uh, we believe it's in full-fledged mode to go across and land across advertisers. Interesting. Any, any specific uh, audience targeting requirements that <laughs> you guys have on I think uh, my teams are also somewhere sitting there. Yeah. They're probably taking <laughs> notes for that. Yeah. I mean, Dhruv here is ready to offer every single audience. <laughs> no, you can't reach me core. only. <laughs> you have to buy cohorts. We're still in the privacy. That's uh, good. We're still That's clear. Good. That we need I to think the privacy. one interesting bit around CTV is, of course, like Dhruv mentioned, the click to WhatsApp capability is there. But depending on who you partner with and there are trading desks available today, there is also the ability to be able to get device IDs. And if you have any you know, zero party data ambitions or you want to get to a certain cohort, it is possible to do that through the connected TV ecosystem. So yes, there is that. Having said that, I would not slice and dice the audience cohorts on connected TV okay. just because it does not have the scale currently. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that, you know, people are very, uh, I would say, more attuned to picking content that they want to watch on CTV versus, you know, appointment viewing on television. Um, you could find varying statistics across on connected TV on programming content. Yeah. So I would not pick it that way and go around, you know, slicing and dicing that audience segment. 
but there is device IDs you can use. Let's check a quick uh, sense check from the audience. I mean, obviously, initially, we asked that a lot of people watch CTV and live sports. Do you think the advertising that you see is relevant to you? OK, nice. Can I, can I get a raise of hands if people who think it's relevant? OK. There's, there's a queue in there as well. OK. Ooh, yes, one more small <laughs> thing, actually, for Dhruv. You know, whoever is an advertiser, you know, you have, you'll make a very robust plan for ICC World Cup that's going to happen in US. Just forget everything. Just put your money on the India-Pakistan ma match that's going to happen. <laughs> that's it. Just one match. You'll cover everybody under the sun. It's going to be watched by everybody So in India. So just put your money on that. Take Dhruv in the corner and yeah, have that yeah. conversation. No, I'm sure he has he, a plan for that. Just, uh, just to, yeah, I mean... Now that we are on the no, pitch, but Drew, pitch Drew conversation, has said that, you know, if you uh, if you partner partner yeah. on a what ke gold, silver, platinum, yeah, yeah. then you get that. Oh, spot that's by right. neither. That's, right, that's right. That's right. So, like Anjali, said, j j j so that leading from that specific topic, okay, I think there is a big belief, and obviously, Dhruv spoke about the huge concurrency, etc., and all that, right? There is a belief that obviously, with such high numbers, CTV usually attracts incremental audience, okay, into the mix. Is that how you see it, or you have a very different view on this? Who are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me be uh, very honest about this. For us as advertisers, we don't look at CTV as incremental audience, right? Mm -hmm. Because the reason being, like I said, if I am doing reach-based planning, which is what we do on most of our large mass brands, um, I know that I can meet a certain volumetric target by just being on you know, YouTube, Meta, and linear TV. Right? I actually look at CTV as an audience that is probably a slightly more discerning audience, mm -hmm. or an audience that has um, slightly deeper pockets. Right? And, and I'm not saying premium only. Okay? I'm also looking at them as audiences who are probably younger generation, mm -hmm. who are not you know, buying DTH or not buying cable. So it's, it's complementary to me, you know, in my TV strategy. I wouldn't look at it as something that is complementary to my digital strategy. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at it as an incremental reach builder. I look at it as a specific audience targeting depending on the brand, the objective, the campaign and stuff like that. Also, we look at it from a comm strategy perspective, right? Um, whether the content that you are viewing Mm -hmm. on connected TV and the you know communication strategy that you have from a brand perspective has great synergies right because un otherwise we know on digital how people skip mm -hmm. content that Correct. you know they're completely ad avoiders right so mm -hmm. in that sense this is a one way to kind of address that so I wouldn't look at it as incremental yet mm -hmm. still some journey to go before you know, we get there, and depending on which platform you talk to, the mm -hmm. numbers quoted for CTV are completely different, yep. right? You talk to YouTube, they will tell you a different number. Uh, Dhruv will tell <laughs> you a totally different number. Geo will tell you something else. So I don't think there's that. Having said that, I don't think measurement is very much, you know, robust mm -hmm. in digital and specifically in CTV. To measure the incrementality. Measure Absolutely. the incrementality. When you go and you see concurrency today, mm -hmm. it is the platform quoted numbers. Mm -hmm. And most third party audits that I have seen in my own experience aren't very reliable. Right. So we do buy third party audit on impression delivery when we do mm -hmm. uh, connected TV or we do OTT. I have found in my experience they're not very reliable. No, absolutely. I mean, measurement is definitely a challenge for this industry. So then how do you, you know, know so measure you, you look at it from an effectiveness perspective, I would not look at it from an efficiency perspective, perspective. because it's expensive also. Yep. Right. I think Compared that, that, to that gap on measurement Google. is there. But, but the kind of volumes that we're seeing on CTV, I think it's getting there. It's definitely. getting there. It will be a little while. It'll take some time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same journey, I think, that probably digital had a mm -hmm. few years back, mm -hmm. right? It will go through that evolution. But having said that, it will get there at some point in time because it's an evolving medium. So, Madhu, with all the constraints on measurement and incrementality, effectiveness, uh, you also mentioned in your earlier response that the campaign that you did for the wedding uh, segment of your line, it worked. So, how do you kind of really measure that it worked? Like, what, what, what are the cues and the signals that you're saying to see that your investment had 
reap benefits. I think for for performance marketing categories, that is something that you can almost immediately yeah. tell the effect of. Yeah. But for Madhu, what yeah. will be the signals? So, uh, you know, the signals, the, those were very strong for us. It gave us a lift for awareness. Okay. And uh, it also had a lot of uh, message association, mm -hmm. which is ultimately, we, we measured that as well. And ultimately, the entire thing was the purchase intent. So, which was uh, the key to the entire campaign that I spoke about, and it was at a wedding segment. So, therefore, the purchase intent was very high, and that is something that, uh, again, we felt from a, uh, I mean, though those are the, I mean, end of the day, as we said, that whatever we do across medium, whichever digital, X, and the rest of it, the entire thing has to lead to purchase. So, therefore, from this campaign, as I, when I said that it did well for us, is from a, it, it targeted, first of all, it targeted a certain cohort of audience that we were uh, going for. And it ultimately, you know, ended up in giving us the intent in terms of purchasing. I think that is what was the desired measurability that we had also set ourselves as a KPI when we were uh, working on that campaign as well. So therefore, from that aspect, it was a good starting point as well to understand that how we uh, take it forward because with every campaign and every season, there are a lot of learnings because digital is such a dynamic, uh, you know, uh, medium as well. So what worked six months back will be dated six months ahead. So therefore, it's always a learning and, uh, you know, increasing the learning curve and then see what worked and Correct. then, you know, improvise on that. Yep. No, that makes sense. I mean, you got to do with whatever you could do with the measurement space. Can I say so, something? Yeah, please. Uh, with all due respect, and I don't mean to sound cynical, I, in my 20 years, have never seen a brand lift study that shows me negative results, okay? The only parameter where I have not seen up this with a significant is purchase intent, and very good, Madhu, if that's worked for you. Mm -hmm. But in my career, I have never seen awareness consideration show poor on any brand lift study that I have seen till date. And that's because brands that have consistently advertised over a period of time have memory in the consumer's mind there's a certain baseline, mm -hmm. and you never really see, you know, awareness and consideration fall. But purchase maybe you're doing intent a that is good job. See, that's, that's, why, that's why I mentioned that purchase you know, intent is see, definitely a big one. But maybe, maybe study. Anjali, you're doing a that good job that your brand lift studies never have a negative result. No, but I, I <laughs> because I have seen some, <laughs> they do have. But most of ours also are completely in alignment with her. It's always really good. So we take it with a pinch of salt. But right. yes, what I said, the most important key part for us was the uh, purchase intent. I think that is where the, the ball Yeah, kudos. If you've managed to get that, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if your message is kuch meetha ho jaye, to, you know. <laughs> uh, good one, the, good one. The okay. brand lift is going to be very, very meetha. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we see some sketchy, in fact, you know. And then I was talking about the same thing to somebody saying, and, and in our industry, people say, no, BLS niche gaya kyunki market niche gaya. So, there's a different association only. Because uh, <laughs> then when, when marketers or advertisers uh, don't get a good scorecard on uh, effectiveness, in our industry, people blame it on the market. Ki, sir, wo market niche hai na, iske liye the <laughs> association of message was not right or, you know. Or upar jata hai toh, it's the upar company. Upar jata hai toh, yeah. the market is saying, dekho, yaar, fund wo, it was. Yeah, creative is the last excuse for all of us, right? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, in this whole discussion, one thing that, you know, we, we I, I think, we, we definitely look at and as data because that is uh, reflective in the robustness of the markets, performance of various uh, corporates and we are in the earnings season and everybody is talking about right from you know automobile to consumer goods or to you know the financial sector you know there's a huge see this whole trend about premiumization in india is real right i mean we see it all around us we go to airports or you go to buy uh, anything maybe <clears throat> in a grocery store uh, there is a huge uh, intent now into action in all products that people want to be associated with premium brands or premium quality or premium products and as that 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 trend is uh, is happening uh, the whole advent of people uh, going towards connected tv going towards uh, you know choices with disposable income saying look if i am a sports fan i would really want to catch up all the action that I want rather than what's being served to me, right? So this multi-screen and all is a reality. And today it does not really 
cost that much as a consumer to really uh, to watch a match on uh, on tv at the same time follow uh, uh, follow something uh, else like a f1 and all on on your because on on your mobile phone or epl on mobile phone so that is the reality and getting into a ma uh, in, into the mind of a fan is going to be very very crucial uh, for advertisers if one has to allocate budget so yeah see i mean uh, when we go out on the roads we see people on the petrol pumps and on the stores we see people watching cricket content live right we see that abhi but do you think since this world cup is in contrasting times like you know obviously 8 pm prime time where a lot of people are at home and then 6 am matches where people are just like you know starting their day do you think that piece uh, is is going to be less prevalent and people are going to be more on the large screens do you see that happening or it's still people are going to come back and watch this content on on the go and on their mobile screens what do you think what's your gut today i mean look the whole concept and that's what we looked at some surveys it's about the whole con concept of um, people sitting together and watching mm -hmm. is dispersed mm. so i have to say that because uh, even if you know you get people home for a match uh, there will be people who will be in their screens you know instagramming or doing something else right uh, at the same time uh, uh, one has to look at it from a point of view of what part of the match mm -hmm. i want to look at right. and 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 follow uh to your point on whether people are going to look at the world cup i think that and that's my personal bias so please mm -hmm. pardon me that uh, that question is answered because there is a huge 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 dearth mm -hmm. uh of hope mm -hmm. and that hope of india winning with rohit sharma absolutely the captain so mm -hmm. you know that's been drummed up so much that for uh, for nothing else but uh, because mumbai indians is out people are going to really watch it mm -hmm. uh, rcb <laughs> I'm, i'm sure will be out people will watch for, for watch for kohli and uh, mind you it is the last world cup yeah, so with so the big i believe guns that we have for the two icons so for that also people are going to watch it so that whole you know that that desire mm -hmm. of at least india trying to get this silverware home mm -hmm. uh, we'll get people into rooms and watch tv absolutely so more people into the rooms watching tv means co viewing uh, we were talking about it on the sidelines right and there is one belief that the cpm yeah, don't give all these ideas to dhruv ha yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> increase <laughs> the whole <laughs> the cpm so i think the team's making notes this, don't worry the, the cpm on the, we are revising packages as this, we speak the cpm on ctvs are higher okay uh but then there is going factor to that so eventually like you know some of the research indicates that 2.5 people are watching one single piece of content or ad so the effective cpm comes down right i mean yeah, that's what we were so you are also Anjali, seeing right? you are also seeing good, good. i think you picked up the cue from me thank yeah, you yeah thanks <laughs> but not so, for sports. maybe not for dhruv but for all for us so are you seeing the similar patterns on hotstar and when it comes to live sports is 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 there any research which or any kind of data which says that this is the similar patterns that you're seeing on your platform yeah so uh, i think even ishan kind of alluded to uh, some of that on co viewing living room experiences uh, or the number of users that pretty much are now accessing connected tv which is not home household but actually number of people what we've seen and we did work with kantar on a study at the previous world cup that almost uh, versus other platforms live actually garners almost 15 to 20% more viewership in terms of the coving percentage so if there are two like you said we see anywhere between 2.5 to 3 that is the co viewing jump that happens during so, during live events because it's a community viewing and it's not now right that live sports has been there before connected tv so whether it's people coming together grabbing a beer and you're you're inviting folks now we we need to see how that goes early morning but yeah um in the evenings of course that whole experience of uh, more people in front of a screen is real and we've validated that with data when we did this uh, specific study during the world cup last year that, that that's something to pay attention to because i'm a strong believer that when i sit and watch ctv and sports content there is 
at least two or three people in my living room watching it together with me. So that, that kind of really adds to the OTS and also to the effective impressions in that sense. But I would add a consumer insight on specifically even mobile, while I know we're talking connected TV. Mm -hmm. If you go around and the high peak moments of a match, you'll see mm -hmm. three people even on a mobile screen. So right. I don't know how we capture that, mm -hmm. but that definitely is better effective CPM, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay, okay. okay. So we I can charge have, more, I even on that. I just have a minute yeah. remaining for this panel, okay? And probably one last question, which is uh, thinking in my head is, uh, I mean, we've got enough re reasons to kind of spend uh, money on CTV, okay? There's audiences, there's premiumization, there is effectiveness use cases. What's stopping advertisers, okay, to actually put the chips behind this completely? I mean, maybe one one quick response from Marco, Anjali, Abhijit, and Madhu, that'll be great. Yeah, I think you answered the question, more measurement, yeah. more data, you know, uniform uh, uh, data. Mm -hmm. And that I think, you know, the industry is also working. There have been work, you know, committees on, on right. the... Any, anyone be beyond side. measurement as a reason not? I think scale. Scale. Yeah. Scale is another one. Critical mass is still challenged. Yeah. Madhu, any? Uh, I'm quite aligned with, I mean, it's both of that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess yeah, as a, so honestly, you spend your money, you want right. the max right. out. For us, it's mostly connected TV as a brand that we are. So, mainly what we are doing there is what we are doing, right? A uh, little bit of HD and mostly on connected TV, so we are there fully. Okay. But good, measurement good. is something that, mm -hmm. you know, we have to get in really hard now. Thanks. Thanks, guys. We are here around, so any questions, happy to kind of take that uh, on, on the sidelines. Thank you, Adi. Great Thanks, work. thanks, Thank guys. You. Appreciate it.